And why do I have two of these? Well, I've busted the one that wasn't mine, so I figured I'm gonna get one to myself and one to return it working. Yeah. I hate to break it to you guys, but you're not going to save any money by running smart lights. No amount of automation is actually going to offset this. And why I'm talking about this? Because I got curious. Uh, this is Yeelight 1S, the, one of the latest light bulbs from Yeelight. I really like them because uh, they come with API and dedicated task support, so they are awesome. And this in particular comes also with a lower power consumption. And that got me thinking, how much do I actually pay per smart automation per year? Because I never did that calculations, did you? So I've decided to test all 33 devices I had at home and I've targeted lights in particular for a couple of reasons. First of all, it would be the easiest way to calculate the power use and uh, establish how much money it costs me to run the smart lights. Second of all, everyone probably going to start their automation with lights or add light automation sooner or later. And third, apart from looking super cool, I've seen a lot of different automation policies that set sometimes really ridiculous examples on when to turn on the lights and how to turn off the lights as soon as you left the room, which is okay in terms of power saving. However, does it really save you any money? If you really want to save some money, you should consider how much power those smart lights use when they actually not in use. So I dug out everything that could be used to automate the lights and that's from smart bulbs to wall switches and switches that go behind it, even inline switches and multiple channel relays, just to make sure I have the bases covered. And well, let's start breaking it down by device type and I'll tell you how much costs to run particle devices for a year. And to test it out, I'm using those Mexico uh, meters. Uh, they have three digits precision and 2% accuracy, which is, I think, good enough for what I'm about to demonstrate. Oh, by the way, and because money speaks better than kilowatt hours, I've used my personal tariff, which is fixed tariff at 0 0.187 pence per kilowatt hour, uh, to calculate the final costs. Now, if you want to recalculate this, just go to the article linked in the description. There's going to be more details that you can actually use to calculate it for your tariffs to figure out how much more or less you're going to pay yourself. To my surprise, e light lights were the biggest offenders. They were Wi-Fi and they were drawing over one watt of power. And as you can see, uh, IKEA light bulbs uh, did quite well with the Zigbee protocols drawing 0.5 and 0.4 respectively. Novostella was quite good as well in terms of Wi-Fi because the draw was 0.8 watts. So looking at the numbers you can clearly see that running Wi-Fi bulbs can be up to three times more expensive than Zigbee counterparts. Now £2.50 a year might not seem like a lot but those gonna add up the more bulbs you have. Now suddenly the IKEA light bulbs, I think they are worth revisiting. The second most popular way to automate any lamps and connected light outlets would be smart sockets. So I've tested a couple of those and I have a Zigbee ones and Wi-Fi as well. Something tells me I'm gonna know what the figures gonna be based on my previous tests. It's clear that we can see a merging pattern in here with a uh, wireless control outlet from IKEA running Zigbee interface. It's leading actually the chart in here with 0.1. This time the results are a little bit more mixed. Now still Zigbee leads the way with IKEA Zigbee socket. However, in the second place with 0.3 watts consumption is a Wi-Fi uh, socket from um, Sonoff. Not too bad. So moving on, we're going to go to the next category. Wall light switches are slightly more complicated and I have a video explaining everything in there if you want to. But it's a perfect opportunity to actually save some money because if you have a couple of ganks to automate, you can do it with a single device. And also if your fixture have a more than one light, you'd have to fill all the slots with the smart bulbs uh, to be able to control it. So you can save the money and you can probably save on the power draw. So let's take a look how the wall switches were drawing the power. Unfortunately, I didn't have any Wi-Fi 
uh, walls which is at hand so I just run one two and three gang uh, Zigbee wall switches instead I'm actually super surprised because those wall switches without neutral wire were drawing very little power at some point I wasn't sure whether it was my multimeter wrong or something but I've seen actually small spikes of one milliamp of power so I guess some power was passing through the multimeter but not enough to get that detected I guess that's one of the best right now options to automate your lights so let's move further and test more devices next up there are smart switches designed to automate your lights these are very good choice because you get to keep the wall switch operational and you don't have to change the wall switch and also you don't have to put special light bulbs so you put one of them either behind the wall switch or in the ceiling fixture depending on where you are and how your house is wired and then you can automate it so how much power do they draw the situation with switches is slightly different the standby power is uh, very similar to be honest across all uh, devices with a couple of devices taking a lead including son of mini the active power varies depending on how many gangs the switch would have this time the power was evenly split with some of them are just taking a lead in terms of power consumption and something tells me this has something to do with the way it dims the light so with these whether using wi-fi or whether using zigbee you're looking at a very similar level of power draw let's move on to the last category which are inline switches and most of devices on this list are some of because they are very popular easy to flash and let's face it dirt cheap so how much does it cost to run it and is it actually worth it to invest in a multiple relay switches to kind of save yourself money run one device and control multiple light sources as you can see most of the devices were performing in a very similar fashion with exception of some of basic Zigbee R3 which was taking the lead in the power consumption now multiple um, multiple channel uh, switches like uh, son of 4CH and 4CH Pro were taking actually considerably more power when activated because they have four different relays that they have to power in order to keep them uh, in on position so it might not be exactly uh, worth uh, to swap to a bigger devices with multiple channels because it will draw more power and to close the list I've included Raspberry Pi running Zigbee stick and a couple of smart speakers because let's face it you have to control your smart lights in one way or another so here is the breakdown and I probably noticed I use Amazon devices more than Google devices but I've included both and the Raspberry Pi for you as well so let's take all of that data now and calculate the typical use of the smart home over the year and what do I mean by typical smart home in my example we're going to assume the following the smart home is going to have three bedrooms each bedroom is going to have a main line and a lamp and in the living room there's going to be two lights in a kitchen there's going to be two lights and you're going to have a hall and entry which is going to use two lights uh, for the mix we're going to add three smart speakers and I'm just going to use the mid-range so in my case Amazon Echo uh, third generation we're gonna throw in three smart sockets just to make it pretty and a Raspberry Pi 4 running Zigbee stick because hey maybe you want to run your automation on Zigbee I think that sounds fair so let's run some costs so in a worst case scenario I'm going to assume that we've got connected everything via Wi-Fi so we're going to have 12 individual light bulbs three smart sockets three different uh, smart speakers raspberry pi and running this connected obviously not operational but just connected to internet it's going to cost you about 50 pounds or 65 dollars per year now if you're going to play smart you can quickly realize that you can replace certain lights with a wall switch so let's do that let's replace a kitchen and let's replace a living room with a wall switch instead of two individual light bulbs that's gonna remove two light bulbs for each room and add one single switch so we're going to end up with eight individual light bulbs two switches three smart speakers raspberry pi and three sockets for the total of 41 pounds or 54 dollars 
But you can also play smart. Let's assume we were very careful and we managed to get everything on Zigbee, which is the most power efficient according to my test. So how much would it cost us to do it exactly the same, but with Zigbee? So let's do that. With a Zigbee scenario, with everything connected via Zigbee, obviously apart from smart speakers and Raspberry Pi, we ended up with a scenario of £25 or $31, which is half of the price of our worst case scenario. Actually, not bad savings. It's time for bad news. This is 8 watt bulb. Let's assume you're gonna turn it on and run it without stopping for 365 days. That uh, means 24 seven, this light's gonna be on. What do you think the power consumption is gonna be? Well, I donned the mat for you so you don't have to strain your brain. It is 13 pounds or roughly $16. It's actually not that much. And if you have two bulbs and you run them for 12 hours every day, you're gonna end up with the same bill. And if you take four bulbs, you will be able to run every single one of them for six hours a day. And that's gonna be the same price, obviously. Now, I don't have enough space for another four bulbs, so let's imagine they are here, and that would allow you to run eight bulbs, every single one of them, every day for three hours for the same price. It would be still less than your home automation scenario in the best possible configuration, meaning Zigbee. Even with insane automation, you're not going to save yourself money. Running a regular light bulb without connected interface or USB inside, it's always going to be cheaper than having a connected light bulb waiting to save you some money. It is not to say that I should really discourage you from automating lights. Obviously, if you're already running a connected device, you want to decrease the usage of that device as much as possible because it will take more power when the light is on. So you are going to be adding to that running cost. I'm going to end this video on a positive note. Don't worry, you probably made the single biggest move that saves you a lot of money, moving from incandescent light to LED-based light. And even if you fancy the retro look, you could pick a filament, LED filament bulb like this, something I reviewed in this video there, and still save a tenfold of electricity costs. So all that money saved can be repurposed and all that electricity saved can be used to run smart automation that run the LED connected bulbs just a little bit cheaper. I hope you enjoyed that video and if you want more information just head to the description of this video. You're gonna find the article when the tables are listed there for you so you could take a look at all associated light bulbs that links to where you can buy them and individual reviews of products as well. So I would strongly recommend you that at the end of this video you're just going to head there. As for now guys, I'm just going to tell you that you know how YouTube works and how to do this or this depending what you like. I'm not going to teach you how YouTube works, but what I'm going to tell you that I do not have a posting schedule. So if you fancy getting a notification when I have a new content, just follow me on one of the listed social media of your choice and you'll always get a small ping when I've got new article or video out. As for now, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.